Um, please start. Are you talking the intro, whatever, or I'm sorry? No, we'll do Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> so my name is Stash. I'm the, uh, the the sales account guy here in Europe. So I take care of all of our customers across Europe. Um, so uh, I'm not the one talking today. It's on Greg. So uh, basically, what we like to do is we like to have meetups to kind of get back to the open source uh, community, and sort of run educational workshops. So this is not a, a plugin for Blazemeter. Uh, we do obviously talk a little bit in maybe I think a total of 60 seconds about what it is that Blazemeter will do on top of what Andre is talking about, but mostly we're going to be talking about the CI open source and uh, just a little bit about what Blazemeter does. If people want to hear more about Blazemeter, it's very easy to get in contact with us, blazemeter.com. We're happy to give you a demonstration, but for now, Andre, our chief scientist. Thank you. So, thanks all for coming. Pretty impressive crowd. I like it. It's a good atmosphere. We are talking about performance testing in CI, which is a trending concept. Everyone <coughs> is considering performance testing, and everyone is into CI these days. But you see difficulties and troubles when you try and actually implement that. So let's discuss what are the, those challenges. The agenda for today will be to review that modern reality and the challenges that we see around us. We will review the Torus tool, a piece of software that we offer to smoothen the process of using performance testing tools inside CI. And we will see a lot of live demos. I won't be only showing slides to you. I will try to entertain you by showing some moving things on the screen. And Finally, we will touch slightly the aspect of what happens when you try to scale these open source things inside larger organizations and when you get an enterprise, because there are specific troubles for that. First trend of the time is life with open source. It has won the battle against proprietary software on the lowest level of technologies. Proprietary technologies are much, much harder to start adopting because the open always beats closed in mess in things that are consumed by masses. It's hard to start, it's a great barrier to start with something that is closed originally. And it's much, much easier to start with something that is open, proven to be valid by numbers of people. So the game-changing advantages of open source are obvious, discussed in many, many uh, different sources. Uh, proprietary software does not die because of that, because instead proprietary software uh, crystallizes and clarifies its added values on top of the technology. But the driving factor is obviously the open source software <coughs> as the lowest, as the beginning part of the software stack of most of technologies. Uh, frequently, open source software is considered as free beer. The analog is free beer. It's not right. It's not fully right because it's more a free puppy. Free beer is too good. Uh, a free puppy is the right analog because you are happy when you got the free puppy, right? But then it will pee on your carpet. Then it will ask to eat. It will eat your sleep <coughs> and many, many troubles that are not obvious in the beginning. But that's the life. You still will be happy. You will be much happier than you were before. But you will have to do some things uh, that are required to be the owner of a, of a puppy or a dog. Uh, there are obvious challenges of scaling open source inside organizations because what is built by mostly individuals and communities of individuals it lacks the holistic approach of enterprise organization. It, it lacks no, no individual open source enthusiast, including me, builds a feature that is meant to be used by enterprise company. Because all of those enthusiasts, they kind of rogue and they don't, don't think about enterprises when they do their uh, enthusiastic innovations. 
this is why uh, this is one of the most mentioned troubles of open source software. It does not survive the enterprise usage. It's too much of an overhead. But that's okay. We anyway developers do their decision, and they cannot simply cannot pick not anything except open source because they have to try. They have to take it into their hands to start. It's hard to just wait that somebody will make decision for you, and they then you will just tell you which technology to use. You won't be happy. You will. You won't ever happy. You won't ever be happy about somebody coming to you and saying, "Hey, you will be wearing these clothes and you will be driving this car," and no matter what you think about it. Developers are not of that nature. Another trend that we see today is DevOps, that mixture of responsibility when we make developers and operations guys share their responsibilities. It's quite a rational practice. It really helps to improve the quality and improve the speed of your life cycles. One of the important trends of that is everything as a code. These guys, DevOps, they like to have everything they do, every piece of information, configuration, you have it as a code. Because it's hard to exchange, it's hard to drag over time something that is expressed as clicks in UI of Windows operating system. It's really hard. You need to write an instruction, and instead of instruction, you would rather write a piece of code, a piece of configuration file, or something that would drive the actual machine that will change the configuration, run the test, deploy a software, bring up the machine, everything as a code. You put it into version control, it lives its life, you can look back, how was it changing. That's a natural concept today. Uh, DevOps guys also known for their love to disposable infrastructure. Dockers, AWS. It's so easy to not think that you, something will be left after you bring down your server. You have no cleanup <coughs> phase. Just bring it up, use it, and then you throw it away completely through disposable infrastructures. Also, DevOps crystallized the two kinds of tools they use. It's either command line tool or a web UI. Command line tools used to automate some processes, technical things like building software, deploying software, uh, analyzing your infrastructure for problems, whatever. You call that, you trigger that through command line tool. But when it comes to analyzing results of those invocations, <coughs> analyzing results of those tests, you don't want to consume that to see that as command line. You prefer opening nice, nicely looking web UI, which allows you to easily navigate and search through, unless you can leave geek, like probably me, but that's not bad. Uh, so you, you are in these two extremes, either web UI, really, really flexible and inside your browser, or in command line, complete automation, you are as close to machine as possible. We will we will circle back to this concept further. And then the continuous integration as a specific practice inside our development organizations. Uh, we use the total automation concept. We try to put a everything into continuous integration as automated steps. We don't want to do things that are repetitive by our hands. It's simply stupid to do something that machine can do. Let's leave humans with intellectual job and let let's let machines to do repetitive and what we call dumb things. Uh, there's also another aspect which is close to continuous integration is what happens when we adopt microservices and we increase fragmentation of our projects because the trend of the modern time is also to, to minify the size, the atomic size of our projects and products. It is convenient, it is safer, there are benefits of going microservices or at least 
dividing your monolithic application into several subsystems. This is known practice of breaking down by responsibility. But it means that the amount of those continuous integration flows and jobs increase, and less and less time humans want to spend uh, uh, their time to analyze what was happening. They want to have that typical. Again, everything as a code. I want to write the code, copy paste it from project to project, and now my continuous integration flow just by analog repeats in the uh, neighbor project. So these are the things of our new reality. Now, let's <clears throat> think of what exactly makes the difficulties and the reality of performance testing inside continuous integration. The biggest problem is that uh, performance testing is not that uh, atomic. It's not that simple. It involves statistics and it involves a lot of time. It involves huge amounts of data, huge amounts of results, and the kind of results is hard to automatically analyze. There are two big, big strategies that we will consider when we're moving into CI with performance testing. One of them is fully featured tests, but occasional, overnight, maybe weekly. So this is suitable for larger, maybe older projects. And the important thing that I want to uh, deliver today is that you need to do it at least nightly. You need to do regular performance testing for your projects. The this large concept of fully featured test it means that you will um, that you will bring up the infrastructure that is quite complex because you test a sophisticated scenario. You, the price of making this test is high because your project is larger monolith. And because bringing it up costs you so much, you cannot just do small component tests. It's too expensive. You want to do fully featured tests. You want to do a longer test or set of tests against uh, brought up infrastructure. It works well if the project long, lives long life, if the project has operations. It works well when you bring in the logs from production each night to test the fresher state of your application, when you bring in the database down from production, so you're testing something that is not several months of freshness, but quite a fresh thing. But because of this larger scale of tests, because of this uh, complexity of the scenario that you test, most likely it will be hard to automatically analyze the results of this test. And it's okay, you're coming in the morning and you're checking out what was your, it's hard to have many of these. So you have several of the largest tests, you're coming in the morning, you're analyzing results, and quickly reviewing through it, is it as expected? After several days of these checking, you will easily, at a single glance, tell good from bad. But it still involves human. You're already using CI machine as an automation point, but it's not yet fully CI like it was meant to be by saying continuous. So the second strategy is what is called continuous testing. It's closer to another extreme when you want to make it per commit. You want to analyze results automatically because no time to wait for human. And it is well fit for smaller, more, more fragmented projects, but for one important price. You decrease the, num the amount of code you are testing to the component level. You are sacrificing the realism of your test. But you're doing this consciously. You're doing that intentionally, and you understand that this test does not reflect the production uh, directly anymore. This is more a technical level assessment for your code. This, this is more a benchmark. This does not replace, even if you will cover all of your components, this does not replace 
integration level tests. So you can think of the practice that you do with functional tests. There are fully featured acceptance tests, there are component level tests, there are integration tests in between, and there are unit tests as the lowest possible atomic level of testing. And somehow this all works fine and harmoniously for you. The same with performance tests. If doing smaller component level, it's hard to do the performance testing on unit test level, though it's possible for extreme cases, but let's say component level is where we begin. So you're doing more of those tests per commit, short tests, one minute, five minutes, automated result analysis, no huge trend lines, you just aggregating everything into a couple of KPIs, average response time, percentage of errors, maybe a couple more additional KPIs that you know are meaningful for you. And you analyze them with scripts automatically or with Jenkins, with uh, special plugins. So there's no need for human to be involved unless it fails. When it fails, then you're reviewing it. And then weekly, nightly, you're doing those higher level integrations tests. And then pre-production, you're doing fully blown tests, maybe even uh, against blue-green next uh, half of your infrastructure that is about to come live. So this is the right approach to, uh, to, to use CI and performance testing. So don't be blind and demand realism and continue it at the same time. Impossible. You know that from functional testing, so just do the same for performance testing, but do it. Do it. It's not that hard. Start small, and then you will get it solved. Now, this is the simplest list of challenges that sh you should be aware when you are doing performance testing inside CI. Performance testing requires more complete environment. So be ready that your first question will be, where will I deploy my software? How will I deploy that? And how will I, I mock the dependencies to, to, small, to make it smaller, the piece of tested software? Uh, and it still will be performing something and meaningful. Will be covering the code. Uh, it runs longer, but how much longer? It's for you to decide. <clears throat> Statistically, you need several minutes, maybe five minutes minimum, to get any meaningful results that will be repeat, repeatedly uh, showing the same levels of KPIs. <clears throat> several minutes, but not hours. This is the continuity. You have no time. Reporting and analysis are hard to automate, so you will need to find the right tools and strategies of what does your result mean if you shrink it into single number? What would be the brightest number that shows health of your performance for the project? Because people have no time to, uh, to see several numbers and make a decision from them. You need one number. It varies from different project to different project. In a lot of cases, it's average response time. In some cases, it's hits per second that you are able to reach. It's what is called capacity of certain node for you to choose. Uh, there are even solutions to automatically test against baseline and compare uh, the test. Uh, the test result against some baseline that you know works your good test. And one of the problems that are not that easily solvable is debugging. When somebody goes wrong and the question is, is my test script wrong or the environment is broken or the code change is broken, it's the question, how do I quickly validate an experiment and troubleshoot get more diagnostics if I like it from existing logs, fix it, and only then I'm pushing it again into CI pipeline. Otherwise, the path of debugging is too long. It doesn't survive the modern environment of the system. And this is hard to overcome. Uh, 
what we bring up as a solution to many of these challenges is the tool called Torus. It's an open source project which <coughs> covers a lot of activities around open source related testing, which were mainly built for performance testing and it answers exactly that question of how do I troubleshoot and debug, debug faster. Because it is a sort of handheld CI. Small, small piece of CI process that is configurable, repetitive, that you can take into CI, out of CI, and it will behave the same way on your computer and inside CI. Shortly speaking, Torus is the text-based configuration format. This is this is very important. You remember everything as a code. So we have to make this thing to live life of DevOps. So we need to make it configuration file text format does not require any UI to be built. It is executed by command line tool as we remember. DevOps only use automation through command line tools and no GUI will survive the requirement. Uh, it uses existing open source tools inside. This is again important. We didn't introduce any of our own uh, load testing tool. So you can just take whatever you have, <coughs> JMeter, Gatling, Blender, Selenium, and run it as is with Torus. It is compatible because we literally run it inside the, the tool that you like, not our own. We do not convert it. And another important aspect that finally when you run the test, you need to connect it somehow to the web UI that will report those complicated graphs and KPIs for you to analyze in a suitable form. Those of you who practice performance testing, you know that you live and die those graphs. Those never ending graphs of timelines that you know how to analyze quickly. So in, in the case of continuous testing and fully automated flows, you probably not always look at those, but Torus covers not only CI flow, but also your manual experimentation and local flow. We will review, review it soon. So the, con the concept of Torus is to have a common ground generalization of existing open source tools. It provides simplified scripting. Uh, writing scripts in those open source tools is sometimes hard. And if you want more people to come into performance testing, if you want to convince them to, to start doing that, the, the best way to start doing that is to offer them some simplification layer. So Torus syntax is that simplification layer. I will demonstrate it to you. It's, it, it is designed to be human readable and easily understandable, not some coding style. It's more configuration style. It has built-in concept of instant reporting. As soon as we get any result from that testing tool, we will show it. And it is like a piece of CI. I already explained that. It connects to the web platforms if you want, not necessarily to to get some nicer looking reports, not only basic reports. How to get it? You go to gettorus.org. There is Windows installer. There is homebrew for Mac users. There is Python open source uh, for Linux users. It is Python software. It is quite modern. It's not Java heavy application. It is more script, script kind of tool. Let's go into demonstration. To use Torus, you need to only invoke command lines. Or if you use BlazeMeter UI, there is a way to do that through GUI. But the basic flow, how it's meant to be in hands of developer, how you start it, you, you rarely start through full flow of CI or full flow of BlazeMeter. You start locally. You want to make sure that it works. How do you start? Let's say I have existing JMeter script. It looks like this inside. It's impossible to work with this and not make a mistake, not screw up this XML. So you don't have to. If you have existing JMeter script, you're just running it as your command 
BZT existing dot JMX. Whatever is inside that JMX file, Torus will just run it. So what? It just runs JMeter, but it's not that simple. Inside JMeter, you will have to spend a lot of effort and not forget to get the instant reporting for each of your JMX scripts. You will find it hard to get the health information immediately. You will find hard to, and the worst thing is that to have this inside JMeter, you will have to spend a lot of resources because it's Java and the way JMeter built inside. Torus is built in a different way. So you get this picture, the simplest dashboard with all of the meaningful data. Percentiles you want, averages, response codes, the labels that you use in test with their failure percentages and average response times, and errors if any. Dynamics of the process, this is important for performance testers. You want to know if your users grow, does your hits per second grow or response time grow? You see it. And of course, the health of, the, of your local machine and some log in case anything happens. And it's all under the principle of command line tool invoked. So the multi-tool aspect of it makes it to run the same way for different tools. If we will take, for example, Gatling, is there any Gatling users in the crowd? Good. That's fine. Gatling is rare, more rare than JMeter, but Gatling users usually know what they do and why they do it. JMeter users? Okay. Eh, typical ratio. That's fine. Um, so the Gatling. Selenium. Selenium. Who uses Selenium? It will be more than JMeter. Usually. Usually, yeah. So again, with Gatling, if I have existing Gatling script, this is how I do it. I have Scala script. I have simulation name there. Do you see it well? Let me zoom in slightly. So the same syntax of the text file will be used for many tools. But here, I couldn't just launch Scala file. I, I had to write small piece of configuration file, which will tell that it's Gatling now and we using existing script which is described here as the file reference you can ignore this and i have configured the concurrency and ramp up and things here i don't have to open the scala file i don't i don't have to even understand what's there if somebody wrote me the script i can just manipulate concurrency and ramp up and whatever and it will run for me i don't have to understand how this car works inside to to write it Again, BZT, name of the YAML script. It's Gatling now inside, but who sees the difference? The difference is probably only in this right side here, where you see that, that runs, it runs Gatling. But do you see good amount of results live in Gatling when it runs? No, right? Only basic, basic, smaller, smallest information. Torus will show you much, much more. This is the power of generalization. And we can take any tool of support. Torus supports 20 tools, 20 testing tools. We can go to that website. Oh, what happened? Okay, so you get tools. And inside documentation, we can find the list of these 20 supported tools. You can quickly spot those that you use. You can go later and check it out. So the Gatling test runs, we're good. Let's get back to JMeter test. Okay, now I want to launch that JMeter JMX test, but I want to modify the numbers of concurrent users there. I want to disable a couple of components that I know I want to disable, but I don't want to open and edit and save JMX file again and again. I want to keep the source untouched, just modify it on the fly. For that, I'm writing the configuration file 
which is again really easy to understand. You you don't need my guidance to understand what will happen there, right? It's obvious. We will run existing scenario, which is described later, with concurrency of 10 users ramping up for one minute and holding that level for two minutes. The existing scenario means that we take script file, we add headers, additional headers into it on the fly, and we also modify it by disabling certain component by name. And we also want at the end to generate JUnit XML file for that test. So obvious and short. Now we're running BZT existing.yaml. Same thing. Internally, internally, it does a lot of things. It checks the JMX for correctness. It checks that you haven't forgotten anything like CSV files that are mentioned there. And then it runs again the same thing, same way. I won't wait for it to complete. You already saw this screen. But we will notice that there is JUnit XML report written now. So I start to grow and complicate my test, consuming results, exporting results. And it all belongs to the single configuration file. I can break down that configuration file if it grows out of control. I can break it down into several configuration files that are features to simplify this life. And since it is a configuration, I will check it into my code base as natural part of my code base. Why is it important? Because I want to be able to go back with my test. I want to understand that if there were a branch with experiment or with a feature that caused test to change, it won't affect my main branch. So if I want to test them independently, it's not that I'm testing with script of main branch, the branch with experiment. No, I'm testing everything with appropriate things. Everything is a con as a code is a strong concept that, inf that affects your testing. Let's get back to the flow. Jenkins integration, we're here to see the Jenkins stuff. I have a Jenkins. There is a plugin for Jenkins which integrates Torus into the flow and it, it is called Jenkins performance plugin. It is very, very easy. Let's review my job configuration. I will use UI flow. Everything I do here is doable through Groovy DSL of Jenkins. It's just a reflection of this GUI. Instead of checking out from source control, for the simplicity of them, I will be doing instead copy of files into Jenkins workspace. But assume that this is Git checkout. And then this is the key thing. I'm doing run performance test step. And I specify that file with additional option that will I will explain a bit later. And if I want, I can also add some <coughs> things like, do I want report afterwards or not, or I'm just trying test, mark the build stable, unstable based on the exit code, etc. So I have that. And for me now, running the performance test inside continuous integration is just either trigger it through the source control or nightly or press the button. I'm pressing the button for now. It starts. And now, the same thing I was running on my laptop in my personal environment now runs in J Jenkins environment. It could be somewhere distant, but it's here on the same laptop now. There's no way to display me a dashboard now because it's a log. So in the log, I will only see one line per second for the statistics that happens. Here we go. It runs the same way. If it broke, I can take it back into my hands, validate, make sure, change, and push it back to be ran through Jenkins. It's not that hard. This is why I'm saying start it, do it through Jenkins, do it through other CI machines. The principle is so easy, run the command line or use this plugin, which is a self-sufficient thing. Uh, then what happens, you can observe the results in these small trend lines. Something was responding slow, then it was responding 
better. Now it responds well. Why? Because we are traveling across Europe doing these meetups and I'm running it and some networks of companies are not that good. Inside CA, the network is amazing. So the response times are fast. Um, another interesting thing is that Taurus has that automated pass-fail criteria. This is when you want the automation to be complete. This is when you want to specify, I know how my system fails. If response time is more than one second or 50 milliseconds in this case, stop it as failed. If it consistently exceeds this threshold, stop it. There's no point in kicking that body. It already has failed. It will spare me time, it will uh, notify me early because there are situations when you're starting your huge performance test and you go to have a lunch. you just leaving your laptop and the test shows 100 person, 500 because you forgot to bring up some of the subsystems or database, etc. But you already gone to lunch. You will come back assuming that one hour test has completed and you will see that it was 100, one hour of 500. Not good, right? But if you would have automated system that would stop the test, notify you by email about the fact, you would probably reach the door, turn around, fix it, and go to lunch and not waste that time. Or if your system is queuing for resources, you will simply release resources for the subsequent test. Sometimes it, it matters a lot to not uh, hold resources for the failing tests. So I have the syntax to Specify pretty sophisticated criteria when and how to, uh, to, to fail the test and stop it or not. Uh, inside Taurus, I want to test it locally, of course, before getting into CI. So I'm testing BZT, my script that I was using before, and then I will add this file. Taurus knows how to merge these files together. Run this test with failure criteria, go. The 50 millisecond is intentional small threshold to cause it to stop really fast because we have no time uh, to go into much of detail. So it will fail pretty fast. It should appear somewhere here after several seconds. Yeah, boom. Your average response time more and more reached, stopped. Full automation and response code tells you that it's something that not a failure of your script, but it's a failure based on KPI parameters. Let's get back into CI. We want to automate that. We want to see that light bulb showing different colors. Same thing, whatever I tried locally, I'm putting it here, saving starting that easy it's not the rocket science to do these load tests so it will run now same experience except dashboard which is an impossible but the same script same tool same everything it will run uh, while it runs let's review why I was adding that minus report because there should be some report to analyze and Analyzing result in Jenkins is not that convenient, I should say. What do we get inside Jenkins as a result? First of all, it's, it failed. It shows us the yellow color, which is a special third state of Jenkins job saying un unstable. It's not that it has failed completely to run the test. It's not that it has succeeded with running the test. It ran the test and revealed some criteria failing. Now I want to drill down what was happening, why, what was the reason, and unfortunately Jenkins is quite dumb with this aspect. Interactiveness and feature-rich reports in Jenkins are not that great. And this is why you would like to have something purposely built for load testing, something not abstract but specific for performance testing. And this is when Blaze Meter come into play and this is when you want something uh, for professionals. There is a hyperlink here to view external report. So I can now review this report from this test 
in some specialized UI. Where our, well, our test was pretty short and we can see that the response time was so high, 65 milliseconds. In practice, it, the, the threshold will be somewhere higher, but here we see that it was stopping because of some errors and 50 millisecond response time is obviously exceeded. This is how you run it through Jenkins in general. Let's see something more that Torus tool can do. The pass fail criteria I mentioned, Selenium. Selenium is interesting. Um, when we say that we do support Selenium, it obviously means that we support running browser, right? So here we go. This is the Selenium script. This uses simplified scripting by Torus. It shows the simple flow of opening the web page, waiting for certain objects to appear, clicking by certain objects on the web page, waiting for something more. This is the simplified way to script Selenium. It does not require, it isn't required for you to use this. If you have existing flow written as JUnit test and G, PyTest, whatever, you can run it as is, but I like this because it is simple and obvious. And the same instruction, run this, but now it's executor Selenium. BZT, run it. Now it will have to bring up the browser and execute the flow. I don't have to know the programming language that will be complicated for some of the beginners. I have to know the simplified syntax, which is much less difficult to learn. And now it starts running in a loop. I can run once, I can run for a while, and I will see the same reporting with the same numbers, so I can tell which use cases, which use cases are the longer, the longest to complete. I can send this report into blaze meter click the share button share it with my friend across the ocean so he will also see the result of my investigation there's the whole story of blaze meter which i will touch uh, slightly later but uh, no performance test is res uh, is meaningful without good report this way or that way through to custom scripts custom reports or through predefined uh, reports of blaze meter you need to consume it somehow through Jenkins, which also gives you some, if we will go slightly deeper for what you can have, there is report here with some numbers showing up to you. It is sufficient for a lot of cases. Next. Next interesting aspect is that I can at the same time with Torus load test JMeter script and Selenium script. And it is as easy as bzt existing.yaml selenium requests. At the same time, it will run and do the mixed test of JMeter efficiently loading backend and selenium measuring end to end user experience. Mm -hmm. This is something new in performance testing because before that, you would need to script a lot to achieve this. And now you're just having this as your simple flow you have implemented test number one implemented test number two debugged it made sure they do what you expect and then you run them together we, we're getting more results you might see there the many more labels because part of them are selenium labels part of them J, J meter labels you can analyze that through slice and dice uis Let's stop it. Let's see what, what's next. <coughs> the next is getting enterprise. Yes. So finally, when you are good with all of this scripting, because Toru solves that problem of the smallest possible, not smallest, but the most basic level of your need, how you start with tests. But when you are growing this practice, so you have many scripts, you have many people involved, you have so many results coming out of those tests. You want to, to minify the time it takes to share the results. You want to have some collaboration. 
You want to have people involved, but you don't want your contracting company, which is also involved, to be seeing results from your secret research department. So you want to somehow manage that thing. This is when open source starts to demand some additional value on top. This is when you want something purposely built for performance testing with good reports and things. This is when you come for uh, the, the system, the web UI that BlazeMeter has built. And while I was showing you the report, there is the whole system, and Stash is probably coming to speak a couple of words, couple of words about the system. Um, and I will probably leave this to after the, the summary. I will summarize what I was talking about, and then we will uh, touch more about Blaze Meter and Enterprise Platform that we have. In short, well, so, but let me just read it. In BlazeMeter platform gives you, on top of that open source stuff that we were doing, it gives you large scale performance testing because on demand you might need the pre production larger scale, not continuous testing, but pre production integration, full integration level testing. It requires a lot of resources to test those infrastructures. This is when you need the on demand scalability and all of the options of scalability that BlazeMeter offers. The interactive reports, obviously, it's worth just navigating through simple line, uh, simple tabs of this report. It, it shows you the slice and dice where you can look through those Selenium versus JMeter. You can compare reports between each other. You can see tabular numbers if you track them somehow and report somewhere the health of my load generator, my laptop in this case. Error summary, if there were any errors, there were a couple of them, socket closed exception, whatever that means, but they are collected and I can go, after, three months after, I can go back and say, hey, this was my baseline test. Which kind of errors were it showing? And the system stores that for me. You will probably not feel the value of it, unless you are living long life of performance testing inside organization. Unless your manager says, hey, but a month ago there were no, no, no errors. I saw report with my own eyes. So you need to somehow sh bring up that report and say, hey, you are mistaking the, er are the errors, just two of them. Um, what else? Team collaboration with access control. Again, the open source individuals, they don't care but most of us work for large and large organizations. We do care of, about access, about somebody not being able to quickly see what we see because we sit on different floors. You cannot run with the laptop each time or you cannot fly over the ocean each time. You need to somehow to collaborate and share. And there are also needs of support and professional services because the open source is freaking free puppy you need to spend good amount of resource and sometimes you have money and no time. So you want to pay to somebody to help you to quickly achieve your goals because that's the situation in your business project and company. You are willing to pay for that. And it's said that many, many technologies have simply no commercial vendors to help community and companies <clears throat> who has adopted that free puppy as technology. So BlazeMeter has, BlazeMeter offers the, those services. I'm summarizing. Key thing, as I said, do it. Do performance tests in CI. It's not that complicated if you take the right tooling. Know what are those challenges for you. Uh, where to expect the friction in the process of adopting CI-based performance testing. What are your strategies? From integrated, fully blown, but occasional tests, which are not replaced by continuous practice of continuous testing, which still lets you to reveal performance issues earlier in the life cycle and speed up the general process. This is what is called shift left strategy. You shift earlier finding your bugs. So I, the tooling matters and enterprise software on top of the open source is the real need for 
good large organizations with complicated team structures. Thank you. This is the end of my talk. And if Stash wants to I say a couple more words about literally Blaze Literally one minute. Did anybody here ever hear, hear Blaze Meter? Some of us before this meeting, right? Yeah, a couple. Cool. All right. So what we're going to do is um, in a minute a question answer where we're actually going to start by asking you guys questions. If you guess the right answer, this is what Blaze Meter really does is we make awesome water bottles. <laughs> <laughs> And start the um, to be able to make it more fair, we're going to do a quick refresher, okay? So I'm going to hop on over to Andre's computer, and I'm going to do literally one minute to two minute demo. Uh, basically, what is BlazeMeter? BlazeMeter gives us a dashboard, right, where we can first and foremost have clear right, control of who's using. So we have these workspaces. So if I'm a service provider, I can have client A, client B, client C. If I am a customer, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe I have service provider A, B, C, or maybe different development teams or different groups, et cetera. So I can do that, and I can also have projects. So already, big problem number one is solved, that I have visibility, control, and access as I want, okay? Next thing in terms of creating a test, I can go ahead and I can scale. So the very first added value that we have is this collaboration, okay? and this ability to have these sort of enterprise features. Second added value, the scalability. So somebody talks about running a three million concurrent user test. Most of the time people are like, no, what are you, what are you talking about three million? We can do it very easily by leveraging all of these different cloud locations. We used to call ourselves JMeter in the cloud. We don't do that anymore, why? Because we're a whole lot more than JMeter today. Also, we're a lot more than just cloud. We also can do on-prem on-prem capabilities with being able to run from behind the firewall and even keeping your data on-prem as well. So lots of cool stuff about scale and distribution. Second added value. Third added value, reporting of course. So having clean you know, reports that make sense when they show up. That's how you know it's a real demo, right guys? Oh, here's functional and what's I think what you just did right here? All right, yeah, one, one virtual user, not very exciting, but get the idea. So obviously you have the summary timeline and then also integrations into APM tools, etc. Last added value, Andre. People like Andre and our support and professional services team, we work with all different types of service providers, no matter how advanced somebody is, it's really good to have that support network to bring it all back to. So it's kind of like having a car. Your car is having some trouble, you take it to the mechanic, we're able to say is there a problem with the engine or maybe the emergency brake was left on. And they can point that out to you. Also, maybe sometimes you need to be taught how to drive with a stick shift, as we say. So we have the ability to bring all of that stuff together and make sure that it will be successful. Cool. That's the end of my topic, my, my little talk. I won't drive everybody into boredom. So basically, if you notice one thing about BlazeMeter, we have this little chat box there. What does that mean? You ever want to talk to somebody, all you have to do is just click that chat box. And there we are. If I start a new conversation right now, by the way, that's Oren, he's based in New York. That's Avi Shai, he's in Tel Aviv. That's Michael, he's in the US. Those are all my guys. Sometimes I'm there too. I will always get the message. One of us will always reply to you very quickly. We're not gonna spam you, you come to us if you want. Okay, cool, that's it. All right, so now into the question and answer session. Yeah. All right, so Andre, this time I want you to participate more. No, I'm not. I'll do the first question, I'll do the next one. So, Andre's gonna ask a question. The right answer gets a amazing blaze meter water bottle. <laughs> okay. Great. Which operating systems tor does Taurus support? <laughs> All of them. All of them. Be specific. Linux, Mac, Windows. Windows. Yeah. The guy it? on the right. All right. No BSD. Congratulations, number one. Andre, number no two. BSD. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Number one, one added value of Blaze Meter. Special services. Wait, I heard, a, I heard a call out. That's not fair. Hand? Scalable. Scalable. All right. That's it. All right. Now, number two. Andre, you pick, so that way it's good. Somebody hand? Hand? Number two added value. Andre, you pick who? Okay. The guy reporting. Reporting, yes. Okay. Reporting and integration to APM tools. Right. Okay. Number three added value. 
Yeah. I don't remember. Well, shouting out fun, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sweden. This is in Canada, right? Manners, right? I'm, I'm allowed to say it, and I'm in Israel now. So, so. I don't remember the third hands, hands. Okay, third added value, right, Ron? The guy in the red. The guy in the red. Team collaboration. Team collaboration, absolutely. And now the very last one. We can all yell it out, and then nobody gets it. <laughs> third one. Yes? Chat support. No, not chat support. Actually, yeah, I'll give you half a water bottle. <laughs> support support, support, support like, professional yeah. services, absolutely. All right, Andre, you're up. The easy, the easy questions are over. You guys missed out, so now it's the tough Taurus question. Yeah, how many tasting tools do we support with Taurus for now? Twenty. Okay. All right. Back there. Pass it back. Three left. Oh my God! I don't, don't have. Don't worry, guys. We actually many. next have hoodies, sweatshirts. Shit, it's so cold here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, so let. Next, next question, Andre. You don't have one. I've got a question for Andre. I would. Yes, yes. Okay. We can. Yeah, I would like to jump right, into so questions from audience. Oh, fighting knives at the end. Okay. <laughs> All right. Switching gears. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's answer some questions because this is the most important part. Integration with log tools. Looking at logs. Uh, you mean Splunk, etc. Whatever. Yeah. Um, not the level of Taurus. Because the integration with those kind of tools, it's probably a question maybe for Stash. Uh, if Blazemeter platform integrates with that, because I'm speaking only about open source Torus side, and Torus does not have any integration with Splunk, just because it does not fit the level of, of technology. Okay. Very, very, very important question about Blazemeter. We are fully API compatible, yes. So therefore, anything in Blazemeter can be sent with API. Okay, so we do have customers that will send the reports from BlazeMeter into a tool like Splunk. What we also are doing now, which we're very excited about, is also being able to pull information from any APM tool or any tool that you have, right? So you're actually going to be able to overlay on that timeline report any tooling that you'd like onto that. So you have yeah, on the same timeline. If we will think of the simplest case, it's quite easy to mark the traffic that is driven by Taurus by specifying some header that will be your own marking header. So you, in, in the Splunk, you will identify the traffic and log records that originating from that uh, traffic. This is probably not the integration, but the way to somehow connect the dots between Splunk and Taurus. What about other tools? Do you have any input with any other uh, log analysis tools? Log analysis tools? Log, yeah, log analysis, log stash, and then just it's not, something not at the moment right, right now, but I, could I have no it. idea. We, we would need the Blazemeter product guy yeah. here okay. to we answer that email. question. Okay. On Torus side, no. Torus concentrates currently more on supporting uh, executors and strengthening Selenium support and Selenium scripting features. This is what the focus for recent time. What we can do is, if you remember that chat box, so if you just go to blazemeter.com and just put, open up that chat box and just say, hey, it's me from the meetup, I want to know about, and you just list your questions, we'll send you an answer you know, tomorrow after we talk to the guys in Tel Aviv. So I'll have you know, Avi Shai reach over to the product management. More questions? Yeah. Uh, how much time would you say you spend on uh, writing a new tool execute? Uh, have this I meant this fantastic. Tool that runs tests. My execute. <clears throat> First of all, uh, the architecture of Taurus implies existence of custom tools. So it, it does not require you to contribute that tool to somewhere to open source it even. So you can keep it private if you want. Um, the answer, the full answer to your question depends on the sophistication level of your tool. In, in most of the cases, you would simply take existing executor component of Taurus, copy paste it, change the names, and we'll start from there. So it won't take from you more than an hour. You will probably spend more time sending email to us saying, guys, guide me how to write a new executor, and we will send you there are documentation pages for that. Uh, but actually doing that, starting from, from, from existing classes, just copying it, 
It's very, very easy. Especially if you will modify your tool to dump result in one of the consumable, existing consumable formats like JMeter like or Gatling like log, then it will be easy for you because we will be able to read results right away from your tool. Come to us. We have support forum. Uh, we're answering questions there. We have live chat on our website also. We're trying to support whoever comes with whatever questions. More? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, let's do the performance testing and then uh, into the sorry, it? background data. Background. How to how to resolve the background data when performance testing. For example, when you the new test in the login, so um, actually maybe maybe um, maybe ten maybe maybe ten or hundred people or or ten or hundred client uh, login at the same time, and uh, you are the first one, uh, you are the number one of, of them. So how to resolve the background data in the performance test? Uh, Maybe you need some other test, test, test data. I would say the simplest way to to solve this is sort of data driven performance test. When these ten parallel users, each of them are different, getting its own password and username. Correct? Correct. This is typically done through data files. Like JMeter is able to take your CSV file with username and password. And spread them across parallel users. So this is the thing done by performance testing tools usually and typically. Um, another question: um, in the, um, the testing and the CI and the, the maybe there are so many jobs, like um, the how to resolve the environment. Maybe uh, maybe, maybe you have one, two, three, four, five file environment in the they are uh, they are testing at the same time. How to uh, uh, how to make how to queue up yeah. against them? How to not test them in parallel? Yeah. Uh, there are certain features in CI. It's either worker count or dedicated workers or critical sort of critical section when you tag your jobs that they belong to certain uh, tag and they cannot run in parallel. It's doable through CI tool features. Because th this is what you actually want. You want CI job to wait for each other and queue up based on certain criteria, how you configure it. So if there is a critical resource, a load generator or a, an environment, so you need to teach your CI, I'm sure there are plugins and several plugins doing that. Also scalability with um, yeah. So I'm not not in terms of not dependent not in terms of dependency, but in terms of in general. Not in this situation. It, it's it's a dependency on the target environment that the awareness of not hitting the same environment at the same time. Right. It's kind of advanced problem. Your question, please. Uh, yeah. So, do you have any? Uh, <coughs> Uh, any reporting possibilities with Taurus, or uh, is it just a lightweight tool to kick off test more or less? Yeah, I show I showed you the. We actually use as main and the best capability Blaze Meter online report. There are number of formats that we dump out like XML files for your first further analysis and automated reporting. If you use Gatling, it will generate your usual report that you used to. Uh, we export CSV files, but for the feature-rich reports, we don't try to copy Blaze Meter. We just use it. And it does not require from you even, uh, even a login. In, even a login. Yeah. Because what you actually saw is reported from Jenkins with no login. I'm losing certain features of Blaze Meter like grouping into projects, sorting those tests, getting back in history, but I'm seeing the report, this is what I need. So these are the possibilities, and the, uh, there are a number of things also, you do. Just so you know, you, you can have a Blaze Meter account for free of 50 virtual users. So anybody can, you know, many, many people that actually can accomplish a lot of stuff using that. 
Yeah, yeah you can dump XML, CSV, special dump summary for Jenkins plugin because there is plot plugin and performance plugin that can consume that result. JUnit XML and many CI plug plugins are able to show the um, to show the JUnit XML file visualized. A number of options for you. Next question. Yes. You mentioned you get the repo by default in Blaze Meter, but uh, and you don't even need an account. Yeah. Are there no caps on that? I can run my three million VMU tests, and it would just dump everything into Blaze well, Meter. Here, here's here's the I, I want. Here's the situation, right? So we try to put it out there and let people get a taste. Obviously, what we do is we say the reporting that we're going to give you for free for Taurus should mimic the free account. That being said. We're not going to, you know, you do it once or twice, we're not going to come knock on your door. But basically the idea should be that, uh, you know, up to 50 virtual users, go ahead, use the, 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 the Taurus report. Over that, obviously, to a certain point, at some point we would like to say, hey, does this make sense to you? You know, but it's a conversation, right? Um, doing 3 million virtual users, though, on your own without a tool like BlazeMeter, Tell me about it. Good luck. You know? and, and I don't say that in cockiness. I say that because I know most of our customers actually come from having some sort of a homegrown solution. And then they eventually say, I'd rather not get divorced or you know, lose whatever life I have left. I'm tired of supporting it. I am now I'm ready to move over to something which is professional and where you have a 24-hour team that's doing that, et cetera. You, know, you can run, of course, um, your own Gatling, your own JMeter. You know, on your own up to a certain point, and then when you're ready to really start using it from a critical standpoint, and you have that you know test that you need to do to have you know go live, you know go no go, you don't want to be doing that alone, and you don't want to be into that sit kind of pressure by yourself. So I hope that answered it. Yeah. But yes, you can use it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you mentioned APM tools on this yes. Dynatrace, and they have a tremendous user community. They are really enthusiastic. Yeah. <laughs> They're so enthusiastic that uh, Dynatrace doesn't have to actually have much support because all the users help each sure. other. Yeah. How is it here in uh, PlaceMeter and on Taurus? Is it more like in the low runner world there where it's really Code well, I, user I, community I'd side. like to think, and, and I've been we're recording now, so I'll be careful of the words that I say. Um, I'd like to think that we have far better support than any of those yeah. um, because we use a model which is freemium, right? So most of our customers will actually try BlazeMeter for free, have an experience with the support. They kind of know what they're buying before they come to talk to you, which makes my life a lot better and also makes your life a lot better because it's not any of this. Well, I don't know. I hope it's going to work out. Uh, that being said, we also have a lot of pressure on us because people know right from the beginning exactly what they're getting. So we work very, very hard in our support team, etc. cetera. Um, in terms of Dynatrace, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but Dynatrace actually used to be using Blaze Meter underneath the hood. When you would open it up, you would see underneath what was called Dynatrace Load. That was Blaze Meter. Since we were required by CA, that's no longer the case. So now, Many Blaze, many Dynatrace customers are coming over and working with us directly. Um, but at the end of the day, what we try to do is provide a very, very vibrant uh, community. Which, if you show guide.blazemeter.com, one second, Andre. So of course, there's the user. I'm manual. struggling with Zoom. I'm busy. Okay, so if you go to guide.blazemeter.com, <laughs> you want me to close Zoom? No, it's fine. It's no, fine. it's okay. So I'm this sure. is right now all of our white pages, all of our JMeter tutorials. We have. You know, learn JMeter in five days, in five hours, here, there, etc. All of this is here, and of course, we have. You know, if you have some basic question, for you it won't say it in Russian. For you, it'll say whatever. But basically, you have the ability to reach out to us. When you are a customer, obviously, that support SLA is a little bit more, you know, hands-on. And then we also then have professional services for those that really want to get more strategically involved and and have a team work with them on their scripting and things like that. Yeah. To add to this, we have open source approach. So the Taurus as a project is open. Users come to support forum, ask their questions. Sometimes they help to each other. They share their solution. We are trying as authors of the project, me and several other developers, we are trying to answer questions fast and be helpful there. But we have our 
daily job. So if you want, again, some guarantees that your question will be answered, this is when your demand goes in, into commercial area. But if you don't want to pay anything and you are okay with waiting for answer for, for a while, and that's your current level of usage, uh, you can use online support for, which is a, the pure open source. Like the forum, people come, people ask, nobody mutes anyone for the improper question or whatever. Everything is open. This is the approach that we use. More questions? No. No, okay. Can we do more questions to give up more water bottles? Anybody want a sweatshirt? Yeah, yeah all right. Yes. Yeah, so you have both the cloud capabilities and on prem capabilities. This is such a good question. You get a water bottle. All right. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask questions about blazing meter and you will get the yeah, problem. Yeah, two left. Two left. Can anyone juggle? I cannot juggle. Oh. No, that's, that's this. That's, yes. They fit for free? Yes. You don't uh, want one? No, I, I did it for free. But let, let's say we have a tool today, such as JMeter, and we're, we're really happy with it. It's giving us pretty much everything we want. Yeah. What would you say is, is the, mm -hmm. the strongest reason to start to use for us? Um, but you're happy. Why to change anything? Right? But I, in this situation, in fact, I would ask you, do you feel that you own a puppy of open source? You, you, you not only own it, you breed it. And it's much more overhead than it, that you might think because uh, running your own tool in-house puts a lot of requirement on you. You have to support it. You have to teach people about it. When you're hiring somebody from outside, you have to teach him also because with open source, what happens, you can simply require knowledge of an open source tool and you will find the person knowing that. But you might have your own reasons to have this situation inside. So, I don't know. Uh, Taurus, uh, if we will <coughs> talk about its architectural need and it, it is similar with the question what if I have my own generator uh, why we generalize and on top of the load testing tools because they do have so much overlapping responsibilities showing those reports why would you even implement that because Taurus could do that for you the only th real difference from your tool to other tools is the way you generate the load, you gener uh, the way you configure it probably, I don't know, maybe some sophisticated load profile configuration. But a lot of things like collect the logs and artifacts from the process we're going, I mean the load generator itself, preparing that data for it, analyzing results showing those live results. Uh, this all could be done in your case by Taurus and only the essential part be done by your code so it minifies the code base for you to support and makes you connected to blaze meter cloud because through that you can scale your tool to the size of the load that you never imagined instead of inventing your own scaling mechanism you would simply plug into existing scaling mechanism into existing reporting mechanism this might be my idea for you to change something in your group. But if you're really happy, don't change this. That's it. Do you need real-time reporting? Do you have real-time reporting? Yeah. And then the next one is, do you have scalability? Do you need scalability? So that's, everybody can use JMeter to a certain point, and then they eventually hit a wall. Even us, even BlazeMeter, when we're running millions and millions of concurrent users, then all of a sudden we realize, oh, that's our capacity with AWS. AWS isn't going to give us any more engines. So then we have to figure out how we get beyond it. The difference is we can actually figure it out. And we're dealing with millions of concurrent users, not a couple thousand. Right, so, yeah. A quick question. Roadmap, what's planned for the future? Oof, 
then I, I then I can't recognize any revenue on any deal I sell, right? <laughs> um, this first off functionality testing, functional testing, I should say. Yeah. This is really you know kind of the new frontier for Blazing. Um, giving a lot more detail in you know, embedded resources and providing that kind of information. You can already today do it. We do what's called a blended test. So you can run, for example, 10,000 concurrent users using JMeter and then five using Selenium. And you get both the results at the same time. What we want to do is bring that into a much better graphic uh, experience for people, be able to basically provide a lot more in that area. So that's what we're, that's, that's really the next area. Um, as well as also, um, you know, just overall better reporting. Overall, trying to uh, to do a better job in terms of the customization of the reports and things like that. Yeah. Uh, one last question. Yeah. Uh, can you trigger this JMeter test from Team City or something? Hell yes, you can. Absolutely. Not only from Team City, also from Jenkins, also from uh, AWS Code Pipeline, and lastly from Bamboo. Bamboo, and really from anything. Damn well, please, because fully API compatible. That's yeah. water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and through Torus, anywhere, any custom anywhere. scripts, anything. Because you can express whatever configuration of the test, including blazing your test through Torus configuration file. So that concept of everything as a code will be in place. So, like, if there is a new change in Git or something, it will automatically, you can, you can also integrate with it. Yeah, yeah, the whole idea is that you can set it to run whenever you want. Right? So you can set it on for a release, you can set it for every change, you can set it for I yeah. use Blaze Meter, but I mean, I haven't done all the things I just use it for that. Yeah, yeah, so Blaze Meter was originally focusing more on the class of load testing. Now we are continuous testing, which means we're only being able to do it throughout the entire. So again, that little chat, you say your email, you say the time you want to talk about it, we'll set up an online Zoom meeting, we'll walk you through everything, we'll ask you questions about it. And afterwards, you can try it on the here. Cool. Any All other right. questions? I think we will conclude on this. Um, yeah, anybody else want a water bottle? Anybody? No? Well, actually, I do have a question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on the functional side, yes. uh, slow web pages uh, makes your customer go away. Yes. So um, then we have web page test, we have why slow, we have a bunch of different Google page insight, uh, stuff like that. Okay. How much do you report on those? And how much do you give, uh, hmm, it looks like you have forgotten this thing, please fix this. So this would make your web page load faster. Insights onto that, I don't think we have do we have? Do you have? No, let me try. I don't Oops, so I Google Analytics first off. Is it going to show up when I run a JMeter test? Does anybody know? Google Analytics. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do. Nope. Because JMeter does not execute the JavaScript that it needs. So for something like Google Analytics, by the way, you wouldn't necessarily want that information to be skewed by any yeah. performance test that you like. That being said, I think Andre is going to have something cool to show us. I don't know. If it, oh, will, it's it will it's work. easy to get the analytics in there, but. But you gotta spoof it. You gotta. Yeah, yeah, you gotta. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta yeah. make it work. Yeah. The question is, do you want to? I will try to answer that question. Okay. It will take five minutes for me to try. I'm not sure if it will work, but we definitely do research this area because when you go into functional area and mention Selenium, it means that uh, testing functionally in browser requires those analytics. But they are not functional testing and not performance testing. They are front-end profiling testing. Exactly. This is the third kind of testing, and we we are researching all of the fields. So if uh, time and resource will allow, we will definitely integrate that kind of solution into Blaze Meter. The like, experimental thing that I research as my crazy chief scientist job, if it will work through Blaze Meter, if they did not remove my experiments yet it will work uh, to run the test and we will get the result. I'm not sure it will Is this work. the, uh, the uh, <coughs> screenshots? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Thing. That's beautiful. That, yeah, that. It's not going to work. It's too cool. I know that's <laughs> not going to. We'll, we'll make sure to send it out. It's actually really cool. What it is, I'll, I'll, I'll no, describe wait. it. No, wait. Wait until, if it will fail, you will describe How many minutes are we going to wait then? A couple. Several minutes? Yeah. Does anybody want a sweatshirt? Oh, yeah. Wait, where's Jason? Jason, here we gotta get it.
Jason's not, Jason's le not letting people out. You got to ask questions though, right? You got to make people work for it. Who has a talent that they want to get up and present while we're waiting? So tell me, what do you like about Toro? From what you see, what, what makes you? it interesting? Give me some feedback. I'm the author of that thing, and so I don't hear online. anything except yeah. questions on forums. Well, one, one thing that I really like. Or, your ideas, where to go with that? Wait, we're talking about improvements, right? Mm. Don't, don't just flatter yourself. You say, that is nice. You say, you know? you need to change. Strategy. This is open source. I hear, I hear the ideas. and. Sometimes I implement them. Okay. So I really like when you launch, uh, if it was Jamie or Yatling, concurrently with the Selenium tests, and then you added the background load and you added the. Uh, Can your tool do that? No, no. no one more, one more point. <laughs> one. Imagine your own in house load gen with Selenium and Jamie here and maybe Gavin somewhere is there. That was very nice. Can I have a question here? Uh, yes. There's some limitations now. Uh, how many users you can?